Okay. Yeah. So um, there is some current legislation to do uh, Sunday's growler sales. Okay. Where does that stand, uh, and where are your involvements in that? Well, we had, um, I was gone, but Badger Kolish, our head brewmaster, went down and testified with Roger Reinhardt the, before the House and the Senate. And uh, I got a call from Rod. He kind of got me all fired up about that. And uh, we got on the horn and took uh, arms on that. And I believe it's going to get passed. It's my understanding. And I hope my hope <coughs> for it is. But I think, Tim, you ought to talk about the difference between microbreweries and brew pubs, because I, I think there's a big misconception out there when the Surly Law went in, for mm -hmm. instance. And I know Fitkers has had that. They've, they've taken That's up the that fight the longest. That's the last time we <laughs> really push anything personally is to try to get uh, wholesaling for brew pubs. And um, Surly, the same year, was at the same Senate subcommittee, um, was there with mm -hmm. their with their tap room bill and that one passed and and then and it was just like a big sucking noise out of, out of the room everybody left all the beer activists like yeah we won got up and left half the right. table were all out there thanks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the table the senators were all they all they oh, I gotta take a whiz they got up and left and pretty so, okay uh, next Tim Nelson you come and, uh, and I was in an empty room basically talking to two Nobody. people that were like uh, uh, so. It, yeah. There really wasn't any interest, I say, even by the public, to get pubs to have wholesaling. Um, what it is now is, I, I, I support it. It's uh, packaging breweries with the Surly Bill or the Taproom Bill now are allowed to have or sell their their beer, only their beer, only their beer yeah. from their one location. So that's what they gain with that. Right. So, so the, just so that everybody's clear on it, with the benefit of the Surly Law or the Surly Bill is that if you're if you become a wholesaler of your product and you've got you've got a brew pub or you you have a full on production brewery. Yep. Now you can legally sell your product. We can legally on -site. sell our product on site out of our tap room, which has to be physically attached to our brewery. Right. We can only have one location, we can only sell our beer. We can't have liquor, right. we can't have wine. Right. Um, but that can't be open on Sundays, which is something that's that's in this legislation that's uh, going through which would affect both brew pubs right. and, and tap rooms to allow uh, yeah. You know, growler sales on Sundays. You know, not saying that we take advantage of it, right. but it's you know, better. But, it's, but that's better than what it was yep. five lot, years ago. Yeah, it, it. You know, we were we were already in the in the process of our brewery planning. We had we had done the plan originally to not have a tap room, and we were just going to you know have a tasting room, open a production brewery, and go from there. But uh, you know, once the once the law went through, it definitely changed the way we we thought about things. And, you know, and it does give production breweries that that initial cash flow that allows us to to operate. Because when you're just selling wholesale, it, it takes a long time before you get to the level you can afford to you know to pay roll, do yep. everything else, and everything that a, that a business I, yeah. needs to do. And so that, that definitely changed it for us. Well, I think uh, uh, you know I don't know if I know my facts exactly here. You might know more about this, but you know the way I describe it is if if you have a, a brew pub. Uh, in Wisconsin, North Dakota, Iowa, wherever, you you have all the right in the world to come and bring your beer to Duluth, Minnesota, and sell it wholesale retail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in Minnesota, if you brew your beer in a brew pub, we it's against the law for us to do the same thing. I, I just don't understand that. And, and for all the jobs and the money, <coughs> the taxes that these brew pubs produce and pay and gladly do, um, we should have the right to sell our beer. The same way they, everybody else can. Uh, I, I think it would be good for the economy. It'd be good for taxes. Um, it'd be good for our employees. You know, like Canal Park Green Company will have maybe this summer 165 people there. I, I need to have all the revenue options we can produce to keep those people making a good living. And that's my case. And that's why I'm so proud of Roger Reinhardt taking up the fight for the growler sales on Sunday. I think I, you know, you, you admire him for that. You brought up a big, big one there. Um, <clears throat> I've watched how many kids that you put through college work at, at your location. Not my kids. Your surrogate children. And you know, and, and that's like you said, you created a job for yourself. Yeah. Rocky, your family did the same thing. And I was at a crossroads a little bit later. 
damn, I wish I were 28 right now. Uh, <laughs> That's a fact, Jack. At, at 48, you do this? 48? You know? Yeah. Okay. Try 50. Steve came out of a corporate environment and uh, <coughs> into a bad situation, by the way, like he's alluded to. Yep. Um, it was post 9 11, and then the 2 o'clock license happened in Minnesota, and that just crashed our, our business model or superior, and, and he stepped up. And, uh, and it's, you know, all, all of us here, I mean, Brian, I in my that. old neighborhood, man, that is so cool that you saw the potential in the west end of Duluth, mm -hmm. long overlooked and forgotten, to come in and make a That's capital investment and create a scene. And then you bringing that guy from San Francisco, San Jose, <laughs> you know, and how about you having all of us sit down here, and now we have, I mean, this is, this is a, such a piece of the world. Um, so, you guys see um, hope for changing laws further, for, like, for example, getting rid of uh, limits on brew pubs, and, you know, just I mean, as we educate customers a day-to-day, Craft figures are more more prevalent. Will those laws change? And when, how long the, when the packaging take? breweries want it, hmm? when the packaging breweries want to have pubs and have liquor, then it will change. Or yeah, that's think, more of a possibility yeah. change. When this side of the retailers want it, because that's what we're classified as retailers. retailers yeah. We're not we're not production. So once once producers want it, I think it has been been. But right now they don't. So, in, in, so you know, tide house rule, which we have now, goes way back to the. 1600s, 1700s in England. For instance, uh, you know, Guinness might own 6,000 tide houses. That's where that rule, that's where the, the tide house rule is, so it's rather archaic. It's <laughs> but, you know, with Dave here, uh, uh, we kind of have, the, we, we're fortunate enough, we're going to have Jeff Bagley from San Diego, California. He's a brewer out there. He's coming to Duluth, Minnesota to brew at our facility and he wants to build a brewery like ours on the ocean in San Diego. And, and I'm thinking, you know, like when I was a kid, about a hundred years ago, <laughs> in the 70s, you know, we had to wait for California, anything, to come to McGregor, Minnesota about three years later. <laughs> Yeah, so now we got California coming here to do what's going on in Duluth. So I think that's so a that, pretty cool thing. That's a great segue yeah. into uh, my, my third question, and I'll open it up.